I'm Rick McGuire. I'm the executive editor of CardioSource World News. I'm with Associate Professor Emmanuel Brilakis, the uh, VA North Texas Healthcare System, uh, UT Southwest. And chronic total occlusions, these are real problematic. Uh, your, your contribution is a new paper. Can you tell me about it? Sure. Uh, again, thanks for the opportunity to discuss about this. This um, is actually an area of uh, a lot of interest uh, to many interventional cardiologists right now and referring physicians. Um, CTOs are very common, so we find them, you know, in, depending on the system, anywhere from 10 to even almost half the patients who come to the cath lab. And the, the problem with that in the United States especially has been that because it's technically more challenging to treat than non-CTO lesions, many practitioners actually um, avoid them or refer the patients even with one vessel disease for coronary bypass surgery, when in many cases it could be treated with percutaneous approach. So the paper we are um, presenting and we um, um, are, are having the journal is um, an attempt to make it easier for the people who are doing CTOs to find a standard way to do this. Because the problem has been there are many approaches um, everyone is doing their own approach, has their own preferred method, but there's been a need for something more strategic, um, something to put everything in perspective and give guidance on how can one attempt to treat those uh, complex lesions. How difficult or easy is it to use the algorithm? So we'll have to find out because, you know, it's uh, just been used uh, um, just recently. But uh, let me start by saying that this is the algorithm is the result uh, uh, of many people uh, who are, you know, very experienced in CTO. Uh, specifically, one of the main contributors is um, Dr. Craig Thompson uh, from Yale, Dr. Bill Lombardi from Bellingham, Dr. Aaron Grantham from Mid-America, Dr. Stefano Rivrer from Canada, among the main ones, but also in many other high-volume CTO operators who um, will got together um, about a year ago and discussed our experience and created uh, um, this um, algorithm that uh, encompasses all available options. So um, what the algorithm says is it uses um, four characteristics based on the anatomy of the patient. And those characteristics are, number one, is there a clear cut or ambiguous proximal cap? The second is how long is the blockage? And the third is, how does the distal vessel look like? Is it uh, a diffusely diseased or bifurcated segment? And the fourth component is, do we have some good collaterals could potentially use for doing the uh, so-called retrograde approach? And what kind of feedback have you gotten from people who have been doing this? People love this. But of course, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it's, uh, people love this because um, it takes them from just reading a paper on retrograde or a paper or undergrade approach or a paper on dissection reentry. This is all great, but it's hard to put them together. And, and for people you know, to do this more efficiently, you want to have a roadmap on how to plan it and modify your procedure. And I think people uh, like it very much also because apart from putting it together and giving some criteria on how to work, it also gives them flexibility. So what the algorithm says is, if this option A doesn't work, let's say undergrade wiring doesn't work, then we can just uh, try a different approach. You can go retrograde and you can go back and forth until you find what really works for a specific patient. I think this is really exciting. And how long did it take you to develop this? Well, again, I am more of a new generation of uh, city operators. You know, again, uh, Greg Thompson, uh, Bill Lombardi are some of the fathers of this, uh, Aaron Grantham. Um, actually, um, Bill Lombardi was one who trained me in the very beginning of this. So it's been about four years I'm doing a um, uh, high volume of CTO. And obviously, you get better every day. Sure. But I think the critical part is the first, you know, one, two years, one, one learns the different techniques, the retrograde, the dissection reentry. So it takes some time, but the key thing is to be committed to this. Uh, and willing to attempt it. This is something outside our comfort zone initially. Um, and uh, initially, one was going to fail. When we start doing this, instead of our usual 100% success, we're going to be 60% or 70%. So it's, uh, it requires you to be humble and just take the time and, and learn. And then as you move on, you do it more efficiently, your success rates improves, um, and you start getting more referrals because people um, realize that this can be done safely and effectively. And this will be published where? So this will be published in uh, Jack Interventions. One of my favorite journals. Uh, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And do look for that in Jack Interventions. I'm Rick McGuire, Cardio Source, World News.